Hello and welcome to lectures in Quantitative Trading 101. This is Hangul Quant. Uh, most people should know me by now, so I'm going to skip the intro. But if you have not seen my work before, you can check it out on this website. Um, this series of lectures is going to be about quantitative trading and quantitative research. And we're going to be focused mainly on coding and trading basics. So this is an introductory course. And we're going to be looking at things um, Inside coding, we're going to look at programming in Python. We'll be looking at some advanced techniques in Python. And we'll be basically using Python throughout the entire TFT course. In terms of trading, we're going to look at the basics of quant trading. And we're going to look at how to implement strategies and test our ideas. We're also going to look at some of the basics and some of the industry practices for risk management and portfolio management techniques. And this will be the primary focus of our 101 course. If you have watched my previous lectures before, some of you would know that I have a previous course on Udemy. Um, so we're going to talk about the similarities and the differences between these two courses. Um, if you have not seen that before, uh, this is the lectures that we are referring to. And this is the multi-strategy quant systems lectures. The focus here was building a end-to-end -end shoestring system for trading. So the focus there, the focus was on building an end-to-end -end system for trading. Right? So starting all the way from, you know, say, get the data, then we were learning how to implement strategies, right? multiple strategies, and then we were learning how to combine different strategies. And last but not least, we were learning how to submit orders through uh, automated API. Right? So this is what we are doing in the previous Udemy course. Now, in this lecture, anyway, um, you can, in case you're wondering about where to find this, you can um, check this out over here. So, how this course is going to be different from the previous course, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit on that. So the difference is primarily that we will be focused on the third and the second bullet point. So these two points is going to be the primary focus of our course um, for the 101 lectures. We will be going a lot more in depth into the process of alpha research and trading. So we'll be focused on um, in-depth discussion of alpha research and trading. We will also have uh, more explanations on why we are doing what we are doing. So um, inside the Udemy one, we were pretty much just programming and then moving things along and trying to make it as condensed as possible. This one, we're going to have more explanations and try to get to the bottom of things. There will be more focus on the programming and the mathematical aspect of things, uh, as opposed to the technological step, which we required when we're interacting with external APIs. There will be quite a lot of similarities, and in terms of similarities, it will be a very hands-on lecture. So we will be programming and you know, maybe playing around with the code and figuring out things on the fly. So the curricula here is not structurally predetermined, which means that we will be programming on the fly. So, so we will be programming on the fly and iteratively improving our system. So these are the similarities between the Udemy course and what we are going to have in this FT series. We will be uploading more advanced courses at the 200, 300, and 400 levels as we advance in the future. So this 101 classes will be the prerequisite to attending those classes. So we strongly encourage that, regardless of your skill level, that you pay attention to these classes because even though what we're doing here might seem a little bit basic for some of you, it will very quickly get more advanced and you'll be building powerful systems to help us in our quantitative research. So I think it's important that you get the basics and the foundations right inside the earlier courses. And I hope you learn as much as you can from this series of classes that we will be posting. Okay, so we will be using Visual Studio Code as our text editor, but you can really use anything, like you can even use a notepad, Vim, or text edit app on the Mac. It really doesn't matter, we're just using VS Code because it is quite pretty. So we are not going to be using um, debugging functionalities or anything like that. We will just be using print statements and things like that to understand our system. So as long as you can um, install Python and 
spin up a terminal. You know, you should be good to go and follow along. Before we do anything, we want to obtain some market data so that we can play around with the data and you know play around with some ideas for our trading strategy. First of all, we're going to assume that you have a good data source, but so that you can follow along, we're going to use a publicly available free um, source of data. So we're going to use uh, Yahoo Finance. Before we go into that, let's create a new terminal and see what version of Python we're running. In case you want to be very precise about what version of Python you're using, we're going to use 3.8.17. All right, and let's try to obtain the data for uh, the S&P 500 tickers as a demo. In order to obtain the data for the S&P 500 tickers, we first need to know what is inside the S&P 500. So let's just go ahead and say get S&P 500 tickers in Python. And you know you can just go into Stack Overflow or something and try to see what we have here. And let's just try this. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. So okay, let's create a new file. So let's see why this is main.py. Okay, let's put this here. So these are using pandas library and beautiful soup library. If you want to install these things, you can do something like vs4. So I'm assuming you have this installed. Uh, we already have those things installed already, so we're not going to talk about that. So let's see what this code is doing. It's using the request library. So this is an HTTP um, request library. So it's going to go into this link and it's going to obtain um, the contents. I can use an HTML parser here, I think, so no problem. And it finds the tables, and it looks for the first table, and obtains the data frame from that. So let's see precisely what this is doing. We can you know, copy this link, go inside here, and we can see what's inside here. And this is the table that we're looking for. In particular, you know, we want this line. And if you want to see exactly what it's doing, we're going to be um, going to this HTML table. And then we're going to be looking for this table. All right, we can see the table here. So it's going to grab this entire HTML file. I mean, this entire HTML under this table. And this will give us the um, HTML here. So if you print the HTML here, you know, um, you're going to get a large chunk of text. And this is, this is precisely what you see over here. So we're going to explain um, exactly what HTML is. Um, it's basically like a Microsoft Word, except there is some structured language to how they present the information. So we're going to uh, read the HTML inside this, and let's print out the data, let's print out the um, list here. So let's see what this thing does. Right. So we download the HTML file. We put we read the HTML inside the table into a pandas data frame and we're going to get this beautiful um, table. So there are 503 tickers inside the S&P 500 and we're only interested in this particular symbol. But there's other you know, information about the tickers, you know, we're not going to elaborate more on that. So if you want to get, say, uh, tickers, and you want to put that inside a list, so we're going to say put list, yeah, zero dot symbol. And then this should pretty much get um, this list of tickers inside a list. So let's put that inside a function. So dev get set to 500 tickers. Okay. And let's put this here in a function. And we get this. So that's not very complicated at all. So we want to now obtain for each of this ticker inside the list of tickers the open, high, low, close, and volume data. So inside the next lecture, we're going to see exactly how to do that.